So what exactly is simultaneous bilingualism? Simultaneous bilingualism is the acquisition of fluency in two or more languages before the age of three. Children may be just about equal in proficiency in both of these learned languages, but with more language exposure, one language can become increasingly dominant over time. And this can be heavily reliant on language environments. Researchers used to believe that children who are bilingual acquire one underlying language system that gradually differentiates into two over time. However, today, most researchers support the idea that these children actually acquire two distinct language systems from the start. Exposure to both might come from a parent who is bilingual, multiple caregivers, or even family members who each speak a different language. Children may also become simultaneously bilingual if their family speaks a different language than their surrounding community. This other language might be picked up at preschool, daycare, or through other child care providers, uh, like a long-term nanny. This is especially the case for children of immigrant families who represent a large percentage of the bilingual population in the U.S. The exact prevalence of simultaneous bilingualism isn't super well reported. Based on the number of Americans that speak a language other than English, we know it's probably less than 20% of the U.S. But across the world, the prevalence could be as high as or even greater than 50% of the population. Children who are simultaneously bilingual not only learn two languages, they also learn the associated cultures of each. This unique bicultural identity informs their personalities, values, and communication styles. It's also a key consideration as we're designing bilingual interventions. Research has shown that simultaneous bilingualism doesn't significantly impact communication and literacy development. Children who speak two or more languages perform around the same on multiple different measures of language ability as those who speak only one. However, there are a few minor differences and developmental patterns specific to those who are bilingual. Vocabulary is an important factor in the communicative skills of a child, and a child who is raised as a simultaneous bilingual speaker may have specific effects on their vocabulary development. These children who are bilingual are not necessarily affected in the size of their overall vocabulary, but their vocabularies in each language separately may be smaller than those who are monolingual in each language. This may be attributed to the nature of bilingualism, where these children are acquiring double the amount of language input and less continuous exposure to each language as their peers who are monolingual. In turn, this can affect the verbal fluency and conversational skills of children who are bilingual by potentially having less vocabulary content to use. Code switching, which is a type of translanguaging, is commonly seen in children who are bilingual speakers, where both languages are used in one single exchange of communication. Code switching has much to do with vocabulary, as words from both languages are used to communicate the same idea. While previous research believed that code switching was used to fill lexical gaps in these children, more recent research has found that code switching may be more of a cognitive vocabulary choice, when the vocabulary of one language may communicate an idea better or emphasize certain words or emotions or even add in more of the speaker's personality. In this sense, code switching would indicate commendable language and verbal skills. Culture is another important aspect for children who are bilingual, and these children pick up on certain cultural tendencies in communication. Differences in gestures, conventions, and body language, for instance, that are unique to the language are switched between when speaking in each language separately. For example, constant eye contact is viewed as a sign of respect in the U.S., but it can sometimes be rude or uncomfortable in the Japanese culture. Sometimes even, cultural aspects across both languages are combined when a child who is bilingual is communicating, and this helps to create their unique bilingual identity. So let's look now at literacy development. Simultaneous bilingualism may actually offer some reading advantages. The first is greater phonological awareness, a key component of emergent literacy that predicts later reading ability. Because these children learn such a wide range of language categories and sounds across both language systems, they can better differentiate between phonemes and different units of speech. This really improves decoding skills or the ability to sound out words. The second advantage is their ability to process text on a deeper level, a necessary skill in reading comprehension and a regular word reading. By learning two language systems, children who are simultaneously bilingual pay greater attention to underlying conceptual differences and patterns between the two languages, strengthening their understanding of the connections between language and symbolic text. 
However, overall, these differences are really pretty small, and most children who are simultaneously bilingual will follow the same developmental timeline as those who are monolingual. Any areas of growth are generally related to individual differences in language experience. For instance, a smaller vocabulary as a result of less language exposure can weaken performance on reading comprehension tasks. Like speech, the writing of young children who are simultaneously bilingual is also marked by lots of language mixing. Children might apply grammar rules from one language to the other, or code mix using words and phrases from multiple languages within a sentence or essay. They also tend to misspell words, confusing the pronunciation of letter sounds between the two languages. Lastly, some children who are bilingual will achieve spontaneous biliteracy. Even if not formally taught how to read or write in a language, they apply what they know from one to the other. As I had previously mentioned, children who are bilingual may experience a lack of continuous exposure to each language, especially as their environments constantly change and nurture one language over the other. There are interventions that can alter and better control the environments of the child to enhance their language development. One of these interventions is called the one parent, one language strategy. This is implemented by having one parent speak to the child in one language while the other parent speaks to the child in the other. This method increases the child's equal exposure to both languages while in the home, which makes up a large portion of their language learning environment at a young age. It has been reported, though, that this strategy could be difficult to implement in the long run as it has more of an unnatural nature, but as long as both parents are committed to it, it could be effective for the child. Another environment-altering intervention would be to distinctly separate the two languages between school and home. This is implemented by ensuring that the child attends a school where only one language is used, and then the family only uses the other language at home. This language separation may result in more equal exposure to both languages and thus similar acquisition. An important aspect of this strategy is that the level of content is also kept consistent, and since the language content in school may be more dense, parents can work to match this vocabulary acquisition in their home language through the consistent use of stories, songs, cultural conversations, and more that would introduce these new vocabulary words. So how do we support children who are simultaneously bilingual in reading and writing? One way is something called a paired literacy approach. This strategy teaches reading and writing in both languages at the same time using a 50-50 model of instruction. Some specific programs implemented in preschool through fifth grade include Literacy Squared and the Extend program. The involvement of family members in paired literacy interventions is also quite common. For instance, in dialogic book reading, caregivers will lead interactive read aloud sessions with young children in one language as clinicians lead sessions in the other. Notably, most types of paired literacy interventions target vocabulary. Although this is part of communication, it can help improve comprehension and compositional skills. Lastly, this interventional approach emphasizes connections between languages, allowing children to transfer what they know between the two. It's also multicultural and culturally responsive, taking into account a child's heritage and home language. For instance, teachers might use a diverse range of reading materials in the classroom from different countries. We hope that you learned a ton about simultaneous bilingualism, and if you do have more questions or want to find out more, there's a list of useful resources at the bottom of our website. Thanks for listening!